Hey guys, and welcome to Project Manifest. Today what we're going to be talking about is how to make an Ubuntu 17.0 for live persistent USB drive. I know, what a mouthful, right? Well, this particular version changed the way a bunch of you might create persistent USBs, either by Linux Live USB Creator or UNet boot in. But it's not difficult at all. The first thing to know is that we'll be needing two USBs for this particular project. If you would like to see this project done with one USB drive, comment below and with enough comments, I'll begin the singular persistent USB drive video. Second, is this project revolves around starting in a Windows-based operating system. You'll definitely need access to one and be able to obtain any administrative permissions for the user accounts control pop-ups that will occur during the install. Now let's begin. First, you'll open an internet browser. Then you'll do a search for Rufus Download. Find the link for rufus.akeo.ie. Scroll down the page and find the Rufus 2.15 link. Once it downloads, verify that you can access the file, as many download folders get very cluttered. Next, go to Ubuntu.com. Go to Downloads and then to Desktop. Scroll until you see the button to download Ubuntu 17.04. Even though there's a link to download the ISO directly, look what this guy does. You can then click the invisible button. On the next page, right click the link and select save link as. Navigate to the download folder and save the file keeping the file name. This may take some time. Next, insert your USB. Make sure you know the exact size of the USB as this is important. Next, go to your start menu, type in CMD, and then right click the command prompt to run as administrator. Then click yes. For this demonstration, I'll maximize the command window. To begin, type disk part to format the USB. Type list disk. This will show all of the available storage devices on this PC. If you remember, this disk was 14.4 gigabytes, so we'll select disk 1. We'll then clean it, which erases all partitions and formatting by typing clean. Afterward, type create partition primary to create the main partitions. Select the aforementioned partition by typing select partition 1. You can then format the disk by using FAT32, using the quick flag, and then labeling the drive as you wish. Here, I'm labeling the USB Ubuntu 1704. If you get any errors, remove any special characters. Type exit twice to close out the command prompt. Okay. 
You can then make sure your changes were saved by opening a file browser and checking the USB name from the computer or this PC. Now we're ready to install Ubuntu. Go to the downloads folder where Rufus was and open it. Click yes to enable administrative permissions. At the top, under device, make sure to select the USB that you just formatted. Select the disk icon to the right of FreeDOS. Find your Ubuntu download and then double click it. You'll then click the start button which will then prompt you to download two extra files for the SysLinux file system. Click yes to authorize this download. Once the download is completed you'll be prompted to select what kind of imaging you'd like to use while writing the files to the USB. Select Write and ISO Image Mode, Recommended. Then click OK. The file copying process will begin and can be quite lengthy. Be patient. Near the end of the file copying process, the progress bar will seem to freeze. Let it do its thing. Soon, files will be rapidly copied to the USB, signaling that the process is nearly ending. Once this is complete, click Close. Navigate to your USB drive, which has now officially lost its awesome name that you gave it earlier. Your file structure will look very similar to the one depicted here. You can now restart your computer. For Windows 10 machines, it may be necessary to hold the shift key down while clicking the restart button. Select Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, and finally, Startup Settings. which will allow a multitude of options during restart. Then click restart.